Ah. There must be a better way. <gasps> Thanks, Ron. You know, I think Tony will really like using a dustpan once he gets the hang of it. I wonder which end he'll put the handle on. In the first video, I did the layout for the dustpan and made the hammer form. This time, I'll shape the metal for the back and the side walls of the dustpan, and they have some pretty tricky contours. The inner part of the hammer form is sanded smooth, and this would be a good time to make a pattern for the piece of metal that will shape to fit this hammer form. So I'm going to clamp this in a convenient fixture, and I'll use a piece of chipboard to make the pattern for the piece of metal will shape over the hammer form. First I want to make sure it's centered from right to left. Then I'll put a spring clamp in the center of this to hold the center where I want it. And I'll pull both sides down to make sure the paper comes all the way to the end of the form. That's looking good. So to hold the paper more tightly against the form, I'm going to use push pins. I'll just tap these in until they bottom out. And I'm making sure it's fitting flush against the form when I tap the pins into place. That's looking good so far. I'm going to move this down a little farther on the form. And again, I can adjust the fit by pushing the paper away from me or pulling it toward me. I want it to be nicely centered on that form. So let me put another push pin in here. I'll put another push pin in near the bottom. So this side is completed. Let's do the same fitting on the other side. Again, I want to position this so it's fitting flush against that form. And I'll put one more in place right down at the bottom. So the paper is held tightly against the form. Now I want to mark the paper where it touches the edges of the hammer form. So I'll reach in here with a pencil and just make one mark right on that edge all the way around. I'll mark the sides as well. And then reaching in from the back, I'll make another mark on the bottom edge of the hammer form. All right, the paper is marked. Now I'll pull the push pins out. Put this back in the fixture just to hold it. I'll use some pliers to pull the pins out. I can trim on this bottom line, but I need to add extra material on the top so I'll have enough to wrap around the two steel bars. I'm going to add one inch above this line. To move this line out one inch, I'll put down two rows of half inch tape. There's the first line, and I'll lay down the second line. So I'll cut this pattern out now. So the pattern is complete. I'll lay this on a sheet of aluminum and cut out a part. The material I'm using is 3003 H14. It's 1 16th inch thickness, which is about 1.6 millimeters. And I'll use some small spring clamps to hold my pattern to the metal. Then I'll trace around the edge with a felt tip marker. And I'll cut this with a jigsaw. So I'm using a regular wood cutting blade and it seems to cut aluminum just fine.
and I'll make the second cut on the upper line. I'll deburr these edges with a file, and I'll cut these ends with hand shears. I buy my aluminum with a white plastic covering on it to protect the surface, but I need to take that off now. And I want to soften this piece of aluminum by annealing. I buy this material in the half hard condition, but it's much easier to form in the dead soft condition, so I need to heat it to its annealing temperature. And I'm going to do that with a propane torch. I often use an oxyacetylene torch for this, but I want to show you it can be done with some very simple tools. So I'm using ink from a permanent marker, and this ink burns off at the correct temperature to anneal the aluminum. And the reason I put a metal rod under the aluminum is so the tabletop doesn't suck the heat out of it. This is an ordinary propane torch, and I'll use it to heat the metal until the ink burns off. This piece of metal is completely softened now. The ink burns off at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just a little above the transformation temperature that takes the temper out of the metal. So I purchased the metal in the half-hard condition, and this heating or annealing process has brought it down to the dead soft condition. This is a non-heat treatable alloy of aluminum, so I could quench it with air or water, and it wouldn't harm it in any way but I'm just going to let it cool naturally. I cut one extra piece of wood to use as a backer for the hammer form, so I'm going to screw that into place against the inner part of the hammer form. So I'm going to align this with the alignment pins, and I'll drive the screws that hold the two parts together. So I'll clamp this to the edge of the table, and now I can bend the aluminum piece to match this part of the form. You can see how soft the aluminum is. I can literally bend it with my hands. And we'll put the outer part of the form into place. And I'll pull these together with clamps. I'll check the ends to make sure everything's nice and flush. I'm going to loosen the clamps just slightly and tap this piece of metal down to be sure it's bottomed out at the bottom of the form. Okay, that's looking good. So I'll reclamp everything. There's one more thing I want to do before I hammer the flange down. I want to drill holes through the outer part of the hammer form through the aluminum on both sides and then put pins in those holes and that will prevent these legs from wanting to lift up as I do the hammering on the back of the form. And I'll put a pin on each side. Okay, so now I can start working these flanges down. I'm going to start in the corners. That's where it's most difficult to do the forming. I'll be using a mallet with a very rounded nose on it. I'll work into this corner next. And I'll use a steel hammer with a medium crown face to do most of the forming. I'll lay this clamp down so I can work better on the center of this. And now I'll switch to a hammer with a low crown face. It's 
So this is the beauty of the hammer form. As long as you push the metal down until the air gap underneath it disappears, the metal will take on exactly the shape of the form underneath it. And the reason I used round steel bar for the edge of the hammer form is so I knew I would have a consistent radius all the way around this edge. So I'm also going to hammer another flange on the outside of this, but I need to trim the material thickness down first. So I've made a special marking tool to scribe this edge. This is just a piece of thin plywood that fits tight against the steel bar. And this part can rotate. And this part has a drywall screw pushed through it, so the point of this screw will mark the metal. And I want the offset to be exactly 3 16 of an inch. So the point of the drywall screw is 3 16 from the edge of the form. So I'll lock this in place so it can't move. And then I'll scribe all the way around this part. So I'll pull the pins out, disassemble the form, and now I can trim right on this line. I'll use aircraft shears to trim the edge. I want to put two holes in this top flange so each time the part goes on the form, its position will repeat accurately. So I'm going to make two pointed screws that go in these holes. So I'll use vice grips to hold onto these pointed screws to allow me to screw them into place in the front two holes on the hammer form. So I'll put the steel part into place. And I'll put several of the screws into place. Now I can put the aluminum piece into place and I'll align it with the pins that go through these holes. And then I'll tap these flanges with a hammer to mark the back side. So these are the marks for the holes I'm going to make and I'll drill those with a small drill. So I can reassemble this now and put screws through the new holes. And now I want to make a clamping block to hold it tightly against the bar as I form the outer flange. This is a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch MDF I had. This is just about the right size to make a clamping block from. So I'll start by positioning the steel bars right on top of it. And I'll put some screws in place to hold this. And now I'll use a pencil to mark right around the perimeter of this. So the line I've just made is not the trim line. I want to cut an eighth inch inside of this line so the edge of the clamping block will come right to the center of the radius of the round bar. So I'll use some eighth inch masking tape to mark the MDF. And when I cut this, I'll cut on the inner edge of this eighth inch tape. So I'll trim this off camera and we'll get on to the next step. So the clamping block is cut to size and I put some long screws in it. So let's go ahead and assemble all these components. First I'll put the piece of aluminum into the hammer form. Then I'll start these screws in the holes. And next I'll use some C-clamps to pull everything tight. Now I can start working this edge down around the steel bar and I'll be using a caulking tool that I'll tap with a ball peen hammer. So there's that beautifully radius edge and I don't know of another way to get that detail without using a hammer form. The forming I did on these edges left some hammer marks and this is a very good time to take the marks out. So I'm using an orbital sander, but it's locked to be a disc sander. And I have 120 grit paper on it. And I like to use a little bar soap on my sandpaper as a lubricant. That keeps it from getting loaded up by soft metals like aluminum. 
So I'm going to sand this surface. That's cleaned up nicely with the disc sander. So using the same grid disc, I'll change the sander to orbital mode and go over this one more time. I couldn't be more pleased with the way the top edge of this is shaped up. And the next step is I need to make an angled cut on this so it can intersect with the pan on the bottom. So when the cut is made, the part will look like this. And this is actually a challenging job for a number of reasons. One is that this part is very flexible. Another is it's quite difficult to hold on to. I'd like each of you to think about how you would lay out this cut. So in the next video, I'll bring the dustpan to completion. The finishing touch will be mounting the one-of-a-kind handle that this old Tony is making. I'll see you then.